Now, in the last year or so, we've had uh, two new medications approved for the treatment of uh, narcolepsy. Uh, Russ, would you like to discuss? Is one called patolicent? Yeah, patolicent. Tell us about that. that. That's probably the most recent um, FDA-approved drug for improving alertness or wake wakefulness during the daytime. It's, it's indicated only for narcolepsy. Now, the modafinils, as you know, may uh, are are uh, approved for other di disorders of sleepiness, but but Wakex or uh, patolicent is the uh, a one that uh, most recently was shown to be effective. Uh, the, there were a couple of different clinical trials that uh, are worth discussing just briefly. They used uh, the Epworth Sleepiness Scale and found over a course of, uh, of the initial trials over eight week period that, that they did improve, uh, the, the scores improved on the Epworth Sleepiness Scale. Now, um, in, in Europe, the drug where it is approved for both um, improving a wakefulness, it, it, it's also approved for treating cataplexy. Not so in this country, the FDA has not yet approved it for uh, treatment of cataplexy. So it does seem to have some uh, positive impact on reducing uh, cataplexy. And, uh, and I do know of, uh, of some uh, sleep specialists that are you know, using it off label for that particular purpose. Um, you know, the, the, it, it's nice because this is the only um, wakefulness drug that, that um, is unscheduled. Right. You know, it, it doesn't, it's not scheduled. So it's, it's easier for physicians to prescribe and um, maybe easier to get multiple prescriptions or enough where you don't, the patient doesn't have to come back every month and get a new, new prescription. Um, you know, it's not without its potential adverse effects and, and issues that need to be, uh, physicians need to be cautious about. Uh, similar to the modafinils, um, it can reduce the efficacy of um, oral uh, contraceptives. And so in uh, younger women who are of childbearing potential, that needs to be kept in mind just like uh, they would with the uh, modafinils. But it, it's certainly a nice new tool uh, for physicians to have in their toolbox of treating uh, narcolepsy. Yeah, the, I, I, the major studies that were done with patolicent, uh, they did two main studies, one in uh, uh, cataplexy and the other one uh, for excessive sleepiness. And these studies were done in Europe and it was shown to be effective in treating both cataplexy and sleepiness. But in the United States, it was only approved by the FDA for, uh, for the sleepiness. And so, uh, uh, but do you think that, uh, you know, it when treating those type one narcolepsy patients that have both cataplexy and sleepiness and you're using it for the sleepiness, do you think it's gonna have some beneficial effect I think on it the will cataplexy? have benefit. It will have mm. some beneficial effect in, in those patients that have cataplexy. And I should mention also that this is a once a day dosing. This is not, there's no, there's no need or there's no ability to give a second dose. And you know, we, we participated in, in an early access program for this drug and found that it seemed to carry most patients through the late afternoon in terms of keeping them alert and awake. It didn't, uh, it didn't sort of poop out in the, in the, uh, by lunchtime. It just kept, kept good and kept going. And um, I mean, one of the adverse effects of, of any potential wake-promoting drug is causing insomnia in patients. And I, we did see a little bit of that um, but I don't think that's unique to patolicent. I think yeah. you have to be careful to make sure patients are taking the dose right when they wake up in the morning, if, especially if they're having any difficulty with uh, falling asleep at night. Yeah. Has quite a novel mechanism of action, doesn't it? Do you want to it, discuss it does, a little it does, about that? Just, just a little bit about this is because I, I think we know the usual suspects of dopamine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, and serotonin, but, but one, one neurotransmitter that has not been previously implicated in excessive sleepiness has been the histamine. And, and um, although I think we all know that the antihistamines um, do cause sleepiness, so anything that improves or increases the amount of available histamine uh, can have a positive impact. And that's this, this drug. This is the only drug that does actually have an impact on increasing histamine um, in the brain and causing wake, therefore causing wakefulness. Um, there may be others that are coming down the line after patolicent, but this is a mechanism of action. This is the only drug that does address that mechanism of action. Mm.
Can you use this drug in children, Carol? There's a clinical trial in Europe, so hopefully we too will have another tool in our toolbox. Um, I mean, I see patients up to 25, so I also was part of the early access program. And I think this medication has a slightly lower side effect profile in terms of anxiety or mood disorders. And so it's been beneficial for patients who have those comorbidities where stimulants can really make those uh, situations worse. This is a medication that seems to be a little bit more neutral to mood okay. comorbidities.